President Obama getting hammered by the media told reporters overseas this week that he wants to degrade and destroy ISIS, but he also used this language. We can continue to shrink ISIL's uh, sphere of influence, its effectiveness, its financing, its, uh, its military capabilities, uh, to the point where uh, it is a manageable problem. And he's drawing flack for words like manageable. Liberal Washington Post columnist Dana Milbank accusing Obama of happy talk. National Journal's Ron Fournier saying people don't want their president to be hawkish, but they hate to see him weakish. Other journalists appearing skeptical, exasperated, only a few defending the president. If President Obama does not, does not formally declare war on Muslim terrorism, He's doing all Americans a great disservice. I think the terrorist threat is overwhelmingly overstated. Mm -hmm. I think we're spending too much time, too much money. Republicans are shamelessly using ISA and the killing of Satloff to slam the president of the United States. It's just another day at the office. So how is this coverage shaping the war debate? Joining us now, Lauren Ashburn, who hosts Social Buzz on the Fox website. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard, and Juan William, columnist for The Hill, all are Fox News contributors. Huge Huffington Post headline this week, media war frenzy like 2003. Does this remind you of the run-up to the Iraq war? No, it really doesn't, and here's why. In 2003, we had the administration pushing a war, pushing an agenda, weapons of mass destruction, and the press saluting, basically saying, hey, whatever you want, that's fine with us. Now, 2014, flash forward, and you have the press pushing to do something, whatever something is, and you have the administration leading from behind saying we don't have a strategy, and the press pouncing on that. That's an interesting phrase, Steve Hayes, because there does seem to me to be this demand in much of the media, not all, that the president do something, even though military action is risky, and there are no great options here. Yeah, I'm not sure that they're pushing him to do something so much as recognizing the basic fact that, that what he's done to this point hasn't worked. I mean, you've got a president who understated pretty dramatically the threat from a variety of jihadists, going back to the beginning of his administration, whether it was the Christmas Day bomber and the president calling him an isolated extremist but when he wasn't. you saying that, that the press therefore just wants Obama to admit error and apologize no, for I the don't, past? I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think they're pressing him because he's said things like, you know, the, the ISIS is a JV squad. You have to, if you remember the media, if you're covering the White House on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to ask the question, how he could have gotten that so wrong? Did it, was it bad intelligence? Did he, miss, did he underestimate it? Um, I think it's, a, it's responsible coverage, and I don't get the sense that they're necessarily beating the drums for war. Do you see many in the media pushing or advocating or somehow wanting military action here, Juan? I'd have to have my head in a hole not to see it. It's all over. Uh, you know, Are you saying I have my head in the hole? No, I, <laughs> I, I, have, said. I, I said I, sad. I would have to have my head sad. in a hole. Sad. Thanks, Juan. Uh, like but I don't think there's any question. Uh, you just played clips of Bill O'Reilly and others saying, you know, if we have to declare a war right now. I think that, there, you know, it's very interesting. Obviously, in the media narrative, Howie, yes, the more dramatic action taken, the bigger our numbers, the bigger our ratings. I think that's a very dangerous thing. You look wait, back wait, at wait, Syria. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying that there's an institutional uh, bias or imperative for war because that will get more people to watch our television shows? I think that's part of it because I think that what has happened, you look back historically, just recent history, the Syria situation, the big red line, remember that was a big deal? Congress wouldn't approve it. The American people didn't favor it. The media favored it. Well, well who, you, you, who media? Which media favored going to Syria? I mean, oh my gosh! I, the, the, the that firing example missiles? actually push, puts puts the, uh, the, makes the opposite point. There was no drumbeat for war in Syria from the media, and if there had been, if the media were sort of predisposed to want war, to want the drama, as Juan suggests, we would have seen that with respect to Syria. We didn't see that at all. I think we've seen it with regard to Syria. I think we're seeing it now with regard to ISIS. And I come back to a point how we touched on Steve, which is there is no good strategy, and yet people say, oh, Obama. Obama said there's no strategy. He said there was not a strategy for dealing with ISIS in Syria, not in general. And yet that quote was taken and used as evidence that this guy is not feisty, not willing. This is the guy who took out bin Laden, right. you know, it, took out the leader of Syria. It, 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 it wasn't one of the great moments in presidential press conference history. No. But let's go to the question of war, because it was the very first question that NBC's Chuck Todd asked the president to meet the press interview. Let's take a brief look. Are you preparing the country to go back to war? I'm preparing the country to make sure that we deal with a threat from ISIL. 
What do you make of that exchange and the, this focus on are we at war or are we about to be at war? <laughs> Media like to know that there is a clear line between what we're doing and what we're not doing. We want buckets. Are we, in, are we going to war or are we not going to war? You saw James Rosen also asking uh, Jen Pataki, the State Department spokesperson, the exact same thing. Are you going to use this word war? And so far, nobody has. Nobody has. is using the word war. There is no clear storyline here. If this were going to be a movie, we're in quite a muddle. We are our allies are Iran and Syria. These are people who weren't our allies and have never really been our allies. Um, but, you know, it, I mentioned at the top, Steve, that the president ordering a fresh round of airstrikes uh, against ISIS in Iraq to protect a major dam there. Um, are we falling into the trap of not judging him by his actions, but judging him by this linguistic debate? Well, I think that's always a risk. And, and perhaps that's the case in, in this situation, just given that he's finally doing something. I mean, I think for a long time, the president had had been all talk and hadn't actually been following it up with his actions. If you look at the number of airstrikes, they were really not many. But I think Lauren is, is actually right. I mean, what, what, what we <laughs> do... That. No, I mean, I, I didn't mean it that way. You're absolutely right, is what I meant to say. If you look at the way that the media like to cover stories like this, that are inherently messy stories, we want to impose a narrative and say, here's what's happening. We're going to help you understand this. I think the reason that we're having so much trouble doing that with this president in this context is that the president himself doesn't know. He's muddled. It's muddled in his head. His policy's muddled, so the media coverage is muddled. Although, interestingly, the president did use tougher language on Friday at NATO about degrading and destroying ISIS, not just making it manageable. And the five criticized him for going to Stonehenge and saying it was cool. So sometimes do you have the impression that the pundits are just, that he cannot catch a break with the commentators? At the moment, he certainly can. I mean, at the moment, I think it's the... You know, everybody left and right, I would say also, because you'll notice that some on the left now have become highly critical in the terms of the midterms because his numbers, his poll numbers are falling. So I think the conventional position right now on Obama is, you know, he's not with it. He doesn't get it. I must tell you, though, when I look at someone who is praised, which is British Prime Minister Cameron, even uh, Angela Merkel in Germany, their rhetoric tends to be more shrill. But are they doing anything more than President Obama? Do they have a strategy? No. I, I was struck, though, in this uh, Meet the Press interview that he, the president was asked, should you have gone golfing the day of the murder of and, Jim Foley? And he said the optics were bad. And I admit that. He, and he also admitted the fact that he is not good at the theater, at the theater of politics. And that's the first time we've heard him say that. And boy, is it true.